Joining us on the show today, we've got Ryan, who's changing the medical industry by making it more accessible to all with the power of WebML and TensorFlow.js. First though, Ryan, please do tell us more about your background. Hey, Jason, appreciate you having me on. A um, little background on myself, the, I'm a product designer by trade. So prior to include, I designed golf clubs for Nike and TaylorMade and like medical equipment for Ethicon and Stryker. But you know, currently I'm the founder, CEO of Include Health, and what we do is we partner with health systems, PT networks, and orthopedic groups to digitize physical therapy and extend care directly into patients' homes via computer vision and machine learning. Very cool. So maybe you can tell us a bit more about what you've actually created at Include Health then. What, what inspired you to make that? Well, it's, it's interesting because you know, the journey of Include has always been around lowering the barriers of accessing care. Um, we actually got our start after witnessing a man in a wheelchair struggle while exercising. And so like our first product in 18 was an accessible and digitized strength trainer that we put into physical therapy clinics. However, like we knew that we wanted to go beyond machine and even beyond the clinic. And so that's really when we decided to expand our platform into computer vision and delivering care directly into patients homes on their own devices. That's wonderful. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. And obviously in the current times where we've gone through the COVID times, it's been very helpful to do this all remotely as well. So um, yeah, this sounds really exciting. Can we see it in action maybe? Sure, yeah, I'm a very visual person. So maybe we just pull up this video and we can talk through it together. Sounds good. So as, as we get into this, what we're really focusing on doing is extending physical therapy beyond the clinic. And so traditionally it's always, you gotta go to that clinic and receive that care and it can be hard to, to access. And so we wanna do that through your own device and through computer vision. So what you're seeing here is you know, real-time feedback that we use MoveNet on to estimate pose estimation and deliver this care in patients' homes. We're a medical device that we can run on any device fully web-based. And you can see these patients doing different exercises, upper body, lower body with real-time feedback, counting their reps. We track their range of motion. We gather, gather all that and send it back to the clinician for review to help modify their home exercise plans accordingly. Very cool. And this is using just a, a regular webcam, right? No, no special hardware is required for this. No hardware, no special software, just front facing camera and a browser. Perfect. What's this interface we're seeing here then? Okay. So yeah, on here that we're starting with the clinician portal and this is where they create their customized plans for their patient. So they can scroll through and check the ones they want, search through our large database and just really make sure they find the right movements for that individual. Nice. So I guess this is being built up over time and then you can reuse these with other clinicians over time as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we add about 40 to 50 movements a month into the platform. Wow. Very cool. <laughs> and then once they select these here, and I sh we should mention that we offer like functional tests and surveys as well. So it's not just the movement data. We're able to collect all this data on that patient's performance. But then once you have it in here is when you can set the parameters of whether it's rearranging the exercises, setting the specific reps, sets, or then you'll see on here as well as you can go in and you can actually adjust the range of motion targets and maybe drop it from 90 to 70, like you see here, um, as someone doing their mm -hmm. squat and that'll give them real time feedback as they're doing it. Very nice. So but you can adjust it to the patient's needs as they're progressing or, or maybe not progressing to make it a little easier for them. Exactly. Perfect. Once that plan is saved, we package that up and send it to the patient. Uh, they get an email or text saying their plan is ready and then they can open it up on their own device. Once they click it, they open it up and it pulls up this plan and it gives them an overview of what they're about to do, tells them the different movements. We have male or female animations, tells them how many reps or sets they're gonna be doing. And then it runs a quick test to make sure that the model will run. And then we start the experience. So here we, you know, we can tell what device they're on. So we give them tips to get set up. And then we, sh we show them the MoveNet model in action so they understand how it's advancing, right? For not everybody is really that much that tech savvy. But then once we get into their, their exercises, we, we turn the visuals off in the model and it's just about them and their movement and their recovery. So we give, sure. them, we give them an intro here of what exercises they're doing and how many reps. And then we'll walk them through their plan and it's really as you know, prescribed as we make them face a certain direction, verify they're facing that way so we can measure the appropriate knee range of motion give them tips. Mm -hmm. And then we have a rep counter that comes in. And as I do my reps, you can see my range of motion gauge fill up in my live readout. 
we don't give them credit for reps that don't hit a minimum range of motion threshold. <laughs> they're going to go about halfway <laughs> through. <laughs> right, right. Very good. Um, and then while they're doing this, we log all this data and we send that all to the clinician right afterwards. Amazing. And you know, this UX is really, really slick. I love it. Um, you know, very easy and intuitive. And I like that you, you actually show the MoveNet stuff in action at the beginning, just so they are aware why they need to stand, you know, in, in the correct positions in front of the camera, that kind of stuff. But then it's all about the user thereafter. It's really nice. Well, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, we work with a lot of hip replacement and knee replacement patients. I mean, our average patient can be in their 70s. So you think you're delivering, yeah. you know, computer vision enabled remote care to seven year olds, you got to make it as simple sure. and intuitive as possible. Yeah, that makes complete sense. So what happens after they've completed their routine? Yeah, so I mean, after they're done with their exercises, all that data is collected and sent directly back to that physical therapist. So this is a report that's auto generated that breaks down their scores across their surveys and their individual movements. Uh, you can see their motion scores and it logs their range of motion for the key joint for each one of those. And then it flags where you have an issue, like here on the balance test, I lost my balance and it tracks that range of motion. And then we also record the video. And so if the PT wants to see that with their own eyes, they can do that and be able to really understand what's going on from a movement side with that patient without physically being with them. Yeah, but it's a nice to have. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. And, and so and then here is where we load up we load up on the trend side of things. So we can see, is this patient being adherent to their home exercise plan? Are they being engaged? And then we can go and look at their individual scores across different range of motions, surveys, that type of thing to just really understand what's going on outside the clinic and just make that, get that pa patient as healthy as possible. And then directly in here, you can just go in, edit that plan and keep modifying their care accordingly. Now, leading into the next question, Vin, you mentioned you used the MoveNet model for pose estimation in this particular use case. Can you tell us more about your experience with using that? Sure. Um, we, we dove into computer vision very early on um, in about March of 20 when lockdown started. And at that time, like 2D pose estimation was still in its infancy and it wasn't quite ready to be a clinical tool. And but we had some pretty interesting use cases with our health systems and also working with the Air Force that actually, Jason, I reached out to you and said, yeah. hey, this is what we're trying to do and didn't know if there'd be an opportunity to collaborate at all. And uh, fortunately, we did. And you guys were willing to work together to really just understand where were some of the ways we could teach the model to get a little bit more accurate um, to be yeah. able to deliver physical therapy to the accurate level. So, I mean, we were together for over a year and I know we were in the IO, <laughs> we were in the uh, IO conference in, in May of 21. Um, and really is, it was that collaboration that really made it possible to unlock this platform. Certainly. And I definitely remember this very well. And I remember the original model that we had for MoveNet, you know, it worked very fast, was pretty accurate, but some of the more extreme poses patients were getting into were not being picked up quite correctly. So. Uh, with your extra training data and advice, we're able to perfect that. And now we've got a model that, of course, is much more robust than ever before for these kind of medical situations, which is great to see. And of course, all of our users now benefit from that as well. So thank you so much for partnering with us on that one. Likewise. Now, I'm sure if anyone's like me right now, they really want to go try this out for themselves. Do they need to be in physiotherapy to try this or can I actually go and have a go right now? Uh, so right now we don't offer direct access. We do go through physical therapists. Uh, that being said, like we want to be able to offer a demo so people can understand the experience. Uh, right now you can go to our site, includehealth.com, and you can request a demo that we can provide. Um, hopefully soon we're going to put one, just an interactive one where you could do an exercise or two on your own just to get a feel for it. Nice. That's awesome. I think that'd be nice just for people to learn how it works and if it's you know, usable for them. If they do ever need that kind of stuff in the future, they can get a feel for it ahead of time, which is always good to do. Um, so amazing. So what's next in your opinion? How do you see this evolving over time? Are there maybe any other machine learning models you're looking to integrate in the future to make this even better? We are at the tip of the iceberg. Um, there is a, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot in front of us. And you know, we are, I mean, we're deployed with health systems and PT networks and the clinics kind of across the country. Uh, we're continuing work with the government, both the Air Force and the VA. I mean, really, it's extending care to people that you know can't currently access it, right? Um, but even from a technology standpoint, you know, we're really interested in how we can extract 3D data from 2D video and how you can augment your movement data set with that. Um, you know, there's also a lot of interest in being able to perform performance metrics from this. So not just like range of motion, but can you extract velocity, force? power mm -hmm. and look at that across these different joints and really understand what's going on uh, through the movement. So a lot of exciting opportunities to expand. 
That sounds really cool and I look forward to seeing what you create there. Now, as mentioned, links will be in the description after the show. So do check out this great work and consider leaving a comment if you're also working in this space. Thanks, Ryan, for being on the show and I look forward to seeing more of your work in the future. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Really appreciate it. <laughs>